Do you see that on his hand? I mean, what in the world is on her arm? Don't they know tattoos are sinful? Are they? And I guess it's worth looking into since it's become such a hot topic these days, especially among Christians. But as Christians, what matters, at least what should matter, is what God's word says about something, not our biases based on our own proclivities. But anyway, let's get right into it. The two main biblical references Christians go to when it comes to tattoos are a, Leviticus 19.28, and 2, 1 Corinthians 6.19. So let's uh, take them uno at a time if you will, or even if you won't. But now we depart from our regularly scheduled show to talk about the basics of Bible interpretation. Hermeneutics, that is. Texas T. Well, the next thing I know, well, I got an acronym to help you remember just how to honor him. I'd wrap it all together and I'd put it in the bank, but the best I could do is offer you spank. What? Yeah, the acronym is S-P-A-N-C, spank. Now stop giggling and follow along. S is for seeking the truth, because if you don't do that, what's the point? P is prescriptive or descriptive. Is the text telling us to do something, or is it simply describing something? A is for the author's intended message. This is not about what you wanted to say. N is to never yank a Bible verse out of its proper place. C is for context, because if you don't understand that, you're going to mess it all up. And now, back to Lev 1928. It says, and I quote, you shall not make any cuts on your body for the dead or tattoo yourselves. I am the Lord. So clear. I mean, nobody should get a tattoo, right? It's right there. I mean, right? I, 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 okay. Well, let's start spanking. Let's S, seek the truth, trying to put aside our biases. Then we go to P, prescriptive or descriptive. Well, since this starts with you shall not, it's pretty obvious. It's prescriptive. Now, the A, author's intended message, is revealed in the context, as it often is. And we'll get to that in a second. But before we do, let's never yank Lev 1928 or any other verse out of its proper place. No which means we got to put it back where it belongs in order to truly see the C for context. In context, we see this verse as a statute from God, written among other statues, like the verse right before it. You shall not round off the hair of your temples or mar the edges of your beard. So first off, if you're going to state that 1928 forbids tattoos for New Testament Christians, then you got to stick to the hair manicuring customs of 1927 as well. You dig? Now, the historical and theological context sheds even more light on the meaning of this passage. First of all, it was written to the Israelites, God's chosen tribe he would use to bring people closer to him through ritual, the priesthood and purity statutes, all designed for the holiness of the Israelites. And since God is holy and also loving, he wants his people to be holy in order to receive the fullness of his love. But surrounding them were ungodly people, pagans who were marking themselves with images of false gods and performing idolatrous rituals. Now we can see that this specific command to the Israelites within the Old Covenant was to make sure they didn't practice things associated with pagan rituals. They were not to in any way identify with false gods because that would be idolatry. Instead, they were to identify with and love the one true God with all their heart, soul, and might. Okay. What about 1 Corinthians 6.19? I mean, as Christians, we're not bound by the ceremonial or civil laws of the Old Covenant, but this is straight from the New Covenant. Okay, well, let's spank it, but let's do it a little faster this time. I and mean, you've heard this before. People throw it out all the time. Your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, so don't do this or don't do that. But in context, we read, flee from sexual immorality. Every other sin a person commits is outside the body, but the sexually immoral person sins against his own body. Or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, whom you have from God? You are not your own. You were bought with a price, so glorify God in your body. So I think it's pretty obvious here that the author's message is that Christians should flee from sexual Run! immorality. This verse has nothing to do with tattoos. Thank goodness I'm all good. Let's all go get inked. <laughs> well, hold on a second. Before you think you have carte blanche to run off and cover your body with tons of tats, there are biblical principles like godliness, modesty, and concern for others that should actually prevent you from putting a tattoo of a pentagram on your forehead or bad words on your knuckles. You might also want to resist the temporary compulsion to put permanent things on your body and prayerfully consider your motivation before you just smack on a face tat of Emperor Palpatine just to follow a, a trend or fit in with the cool kids or be liked by your Comic-Con friends. Bottom line here, your devotion to Jesus and concern for the reputation of his bride, yeah, should be priority over any desire you have to just simply express yourself. But hey, like it or not, dig it or diss it, this statement that the Bible forbids outright any and all forms of tattoos has been debunked. Adios.